why would you pay 2.69% when you could pay 1.99% for your home mortgage? We're gonna go through some of the downsides to this low, low rate. Hey there, Christian Walsh, Cobalt Banker Wire Associates. We are real estate brokers who specialize in helping buyers and sellers, landlords and tenants in lovely California and beyond. And we're here with a big update on these crazy low rates. So here's what we're gonna run through today. We got a lot of ground to cover. Is 1.99% the bottom? What does it mean to pay points or buy down a mortgage? We're gonna run through that and explain exactly what that means. We're gonna run through different scenarios and show how those payments compare, including a 15 and 30 year scenario. And we're also gonna discuss the downside of some of these crazy low rates. A few important things before we begin. I am licensed to sell real estate in the state of California. I can't give tax or legal advice and I can't help arrange financing. These numbers come from my buddy Mike Michi with Redwood Mortgage and I can connect you to him if you need a good loan broker. As of filming today, these are the rates and terms. Please note that rates and terms can change at any point in time without any warning at all. I've included the annual percentage rate where required, and this number, the APR, is the true cost of money. It includes other things such as origination fees, loan fees, etc., all wrapped into one to help you do an apples to apples comparison. And I'm gonna quote the principal and interest payment. Don't forget that a mortgage payment is also going to include property taxes, insurance, and homeowner association fees if applicable. So if you are ready, hit that like button and we're gonna dive into those numbers right now. So here we are in front of our trusty whiteboard and I've been told my handwriting's not the clearest. I like to think that I write like a doctor, but what I've done is I've enlisted the help of my lovely wife, Stephanie. She got us started on some of these different things. First important point, we have to make some assumptions about the person who's getting the loan so that we can compare the numbers. We're gonna start with somebody who has great credit. So this is a person who has 740 plus credit. We're gonna go with a $625,000 purchase price. In Orange County in LA, it's pretty easy to spend that money. I've included a link down below for homes in Orange County in LA that will fall within the 625. This is gonna be a 20% down payment, which helps you avoid mortgage insurance and get some of the best rates. So that makes it a loan amount of 500,000. Now anything else, so if your credit or loan amount is different, you're going to go ahead and you're need, going to need to talk to the lender about that. My lender, Mike, likes to call it a lender pricing engine. So he'll plug all that in there and he'll find the absolute best rate for you. I think that's an exciting way to describe it. So reach out if you wanna get into that lender pricing engine. So let's dive in. We've already got the APR laid out and we're gonna put all the other numbers in. The annual percentage rate is required by law. I wanted to make sure that was in there. Next thing are the points. And you'll see three, zero, zero. So we're gonna talk briefly about what points are, but first I wanna get the interest rates in there. So as of today, rate term 740 plus, $500,000 loan, these are the different rates. So the lowest rate you're gonna find for 30 year fixed is 1.99%. For the no points loan, the lowest you're gonna get is 2.69%. And then let's go ahead and talk about the 15 year. That is going to be 2.25%. So we have the interest rate. So you can see that there's a dramatic difference between 1.99, 2.69. These are still ridiculously crazy rates. But we mentioned that you have to pay three points. So what does it mean to pay points? Also known as buying down the rate. What that means is that you as the borrower are gonna pay money when you close, you're gonna pay interest ahead of time to buy that rate down. So instead of paying this rate, you're gonna pay extra interest ahead of time. It's usually tax deductible, talk, talk to your CPA about that one. So you're gonna pay that interest ahead of time to get the rate to here. So what does that mean? How many, how do the points factor in? So every point, one point is 1% of the loan. So if it had been one point, then it would be 5,000. Easy to see where we're headed here. 10,000 and 15,000. 
So in order to get this rate, you have to pay $15,000 ahead of time. And we're gonna show you later on whether it's worth it or not when we compare the mortgage payments and figure out how many years it takes before you make up the lost time. Now we're gonna fill in the payments based on the numbers that we have here. So the lowest payment we'll get is $18.45 a month. That's pretty darn low. This is gonna be $2,025 a month. And then here is $32.75 a month. So you can see dramatic difference when you have 15 year, even with that lower rate, payment's still higher. It's because the mortgage is being paid off in half the time. So you can see there's a savings of about $180 here when you go ahead and you pay three points, you pay $15,000 ahead of time, you get the advantage of saving $180 a month. Let's see how long it takes for you to actually break even and start saving money. So you spent $15,000 to save $180 a month. So what you do is you take 15,000, divide by the 180, and what you get is 83.3 months. So after 83.3 months, approximately seven years of payments, you will finally break even and start to save money. So it probably doesn't make any sense unless you really plan on staying put for a while to pay that 15,000 upfront. So is it wise to spend this 15,000? If you plan on staying in the home for more than seven years, then you'll start to see some of the savings. But if you have a job transfer, any sort of change in your life, downsize, upsize, anything that makes you sell that home before the seven years, you've paid extra money that you didn't need to. Uh, the other interesting thing that may happen is you may want to refinance. Now we'll talk about that in a little bit. I don't know how many refinances there will be from 1.99%, but if you do that ahead of time, before the seven years, you've paid extra money that you didn't need to. So the last thing we promised to discuss is the difference between a 15-year mortgage and a 30-year mortgage when it comes to interest. So 15-year mortgage at 2.25, when you add it all up, you are gonna pay 589,576, and here you're gonna pay 729,126. So this is year 15, your last payment, you turn it in and it's five, you've paid 589,576, here you've paid on your last payment in 30 years. So you can see that you pay far more interest when it comes to the 30 year mortgage. So you've got 229,126 versus 89,576, which means that you've paid an additional 139,550. So you may see in the comments below where people say, don't go with a 30 year mortgage because of the extra interest. You can see exactly what they mean by that. It's basically 139,000 more at this purchase price for a home if you go with 30 versus 15. And don't forget that there's an interest rate difference as well. The interest is lower as well and that's also adding to it. So if you can, get a 15 year mortgage, you're gonna get a lower rate. This does require about 30% more income to qualify for this different payment. So that's the other side. If you're maxed out on income and this is the most you can afford, you're not gonna be able to move up to the 15 year mortgage. So just bear that in mind that there is a higher income requirement for the 15 year mortgage because the payments in this case are about 30% higher. Is 1.99% the bottom? I know some of this is just hypothetical, we'll run through, but the interesting thing, I've been tracking the rates with the help of some loan officers, and I haven't seen for 20% down conventional financing, I haven't seen it drop below 1.99. There's some other niche or unique products with larger down payments that may go lower, but I do feel like this may be the bottom. Now, it could also be a case where the lenders decide to reduce those points, take it from three to two to one to zero. But the other bigger question, do they have to? With the insane amount of demand, the insane number of refinances, the insane number of purchases, do they need to go lower? And we'll see how it plays out, but I'm not convinced they really do need to go much lower than this. 
What do you think are some of the long-term effects of these low, low rates? I want you to put it in the comments below. I want to know what you think about this. I personally think there's going to be a psychological effect, a psychological lock due to these low, low rates. I see people wanting to keep that 1.99 to 2.69. And if rates tick up, which they will over the long term, they're eventually going to have to go up. People may not want to sell and may not want to refinance out of those numbers because they're going to have to go to a higher number. It even may make some sense for them on paper, but still people will be fixated on keeping that low, low rate. This could also lead to a case where people need cash. If they're house rich and cash poor, they have a bunch of equity, they're closer to the end of their loan, they may not want to refinance then as well and continue to stay cash poor. So those are some of the, the challenges I, that I see going on. And if people don't want to sell in the future because of their low, low rates and move into a higher rate and acquire a, diff, a bigger home or a smaller home even, this could lead to a further constriction on inventory in the market. Now that's down the road. I'm talking 10, 15, 20 years, but I could see quite a few people who are essentially trapped by their low, low interest rate. If you haven't hit that like button, please make sure you do right now. We'd love to have you subscribe if this is your first time to our channel. We're going to continue to bring riveting real estate content. We're going to bring more for tenants and landlords, particularly eviction laws. And then for buyers and sellers and others, we are going to be bringing foreclosure data plus a whole, whole lot more. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Christian Walsh, Cobalt Banker Wire Associates, and I appreciate you.